Our first presenter this evening, Clark Russell, and the title of his presentation, Friendly Neighborhood Punk Abstract Artist. Clark. I made a bunch of new friends in Riddleville on display at the Tarrant Gallery a year ago, testing one, two, three adult viewers retreated in Riddleville for openly weeping. Two youngsters refused to leave. Four thefts were tallied and one mysterious return. Riddleville's What's It To You Award goes to a lovely couple peering into the installation through an outside window, the husband grumbling away about something when his wife announced, it's time for you to stop talking about it, Stanley. Just get out your soldering gun and start doing it. <laughs> I decided not to post in the gallery is all that we have worth all we have done because I didn't want people seeing the literally figurative sanctuary city of Riddleville through any particular lens. Besides, I just work here and mainly on abstract wall sculpture and painting collage. And I write lyrics and sing songs in a conscious punk band. Blowtorch played CBGBs back in the day, Burlington in a couple of weeks. Burling Blowtorch's musical wizard Bill Mullins and I rocked as teens at UVM. Our college band No Fun led off the first all ages punk show in Vermont. The Knights of Columbus having been duped into renting out their hall, a flipping punk rock riot broke out the instant we started our set. Graduating UVM spring 1983, No Fun's final act took place at the Flynn Theater and featured young skater punks main stage diving into the orchestra mosh pit. Bill Mullins and I forged Blowtorch a few years later. Blowtorch played one of the earliest shows at Burlington's 242 Main Youth Center and at an unoccupied waterfront warehouse where hours after a wild reggae dub art punk bash, cops drew guns on me sleeping with unprotected band gear. <laughs> I hung out with The Clash three times after shows. Sitting next to Joe Strummer backstage in Montreal, I asked, Joe, through your music, are you trying to foster a sense of community or are you celebrating individuality? Strummer tipped his beer and replied, I'll have to get back to you on that one, mate. Making the rounds, joshing with Mick Jones, the sly guitarist handed me a lit spliff and muttered, I want that Soviet belt buckle you're wearing. Shaking my head, no dice, Mick cackled, well then you're not going to Eastern Europe with us. I chirped back, I had no intention of going to, and Jonesy roared, you're not going to Eastern Europe with us. Mick's outburst drew the attention of a Canadian security guy who started me on my way back to the States. Sitting right there, Joe Drummer tracked my pantomime resistance as I was being guided to the door. Joe raised his bottle, flashed me a jagged grin, and shouted in a hoarse British accent, individuality. Art activists in 1980s Burlington formed a guerrilla theater troupe called Safari 500. Under a barrage of sounds and hail of poetry, Safari 500 took hostages at shows, executed live paintings on stage, played dead after leading illegal anti-imperialism marches down Church Street. Three separate cans of red spray paint blew up during Safari 500's run. Improvisational music permeated our Reagan era art actions. Myself, a, collect a collector of sonic samples, Tom Lawson and I founded in the 1990s a, so a sound collage improv ensemble called Recon. We performed live at a toxic waste dump and humongous fish festival, higher ground, and here at Flynn Space, Tarrant too. I play in bands, but art is my work. Speaking with a friend, a stranger entered the conversation and asked me, so what do you do? Before I could answer, my friend explained, he takes things apart and makes it art. Emerson wrote, here is the artist himself, improvising, grim and glad. 
standing small in my downtown Burnington art studio, loaded up with scrap metal. Making wall sculptures is for me like so much atom smashing. Aluminum and steel gets bent, shaped, twisted, cut, and thrown around. I'm looking for what new forms. Noticing structure in the chaos, I'm becoming aesthetically concerned. My, aesthetic remi my artistic remedy includes 51% affirmation and 49% questioning. Nothing good comes easy. The better you want things to be, the more difficult it is to achieve. Let's make it happen. Have to wait and see. Grim and glad simultaneously. I find myself pacing in a clockwise ring around forming artworks on the studio floor. I've seen victorious lions on TV similarly encircling their fallen prey and try not to jump to conclusions. An anonymous viewer wrote of my art in a New York gallery guest book, structures suggest destruction of patriarchy. <laughs> Perhaps I could add that I look to share a vision rather than state a point of view. I aim for frank expression and leave what else to you. My wall sculptures do not proclaim or portray. They would rather sing than say. Abstract in nature, made of real life matter, drawn from the world, parts unknown, combined, composed, and connected strands, signs of life forms. The resulting artworks are three-dimensional constructs of rhyme and reason, chaos and cohesion, preservation and renewal, reality and potential. Call them transformations, outgrowths, composites, portals, realms. If these wall sculptures raise questions, they don't claim answers. They are not meant to be understood so much as sensed, are not about something else, but are actual themselves. And I won't rest my case until intersectional art is legal in all 50 states.